of the Second Death. Episode 6 The four companions retired to their individual chambers, their minds weighed down by the gravity of what the abbot had told them. The monastery, while serene and beautiful, now felt heavy with an air of uncertainty, its tranquil facade concealing deeper truths and dangers. As Charlie sat on the low, hard bed, his thoughts spiralled. The Shiverham was more than he'd imagined. A book that chose its reader, a book that decided one's fate. He couldn't shake the feeling that this was more than just a decision for enlightenment. It was a test, and failure would come with consequences far more severe than simply choosing the wrong path. There was a soft knock on his door. He opened it to find Julian standing there, his face shadowed in the dim light of the hallway. We need to talk, Julian said, his voice low. Charlie nodded and gestured for him to come in. The room was sparsely furnished, like all the others in the monastery, just a bed, a small table, and a single window that overlooked the dark, snowy peaks. Julian closed the door behind him and turned to face Charlie. I've been thinking about what the abbot said. The paths, they're not just spiritual choices. They're a reflection of who we are at our core. Charlie raised an eyebrow. Go on. Julian paced the room, his hands moving as he spoke. The first path. The path of detachment. It's about letting go of everything. Sounds like something Rajan Singh would be interested in, don't you think? Charlie frowned. You think Singh came here for the Shiva Ham? I do. Think about it. He's always been trying to escape his past, his enemies, everything. What better way than to follow the path of detachment, to sever all ties and become untouchable? But if he's here, why hasn't he accessed the book yet? Julian stopped pacing and met Charlie's eyes. Because the book only reveals itself to those who are sincere. The abbot said it himself. Singh can't fake sincerity. He's hiding here, playing the part of a sick man, but the book won't open itself to him unless his heart's in the right place. Charlie rubbed his temples. So what do we do? We find Singh, Julian said, his voice hardening. Before he figures out how to access the Shivaham. If he gets to it before us, we're finished. Meanwhile, in another chamber, Eleanor sat cross-legged on her bed, staring out at the moonlit mountains. The abbot's words echoed in her mind. The price of insight is singularity. She felt a tug in her chest, a deep pull toward the path of service. It resonated with her, with the part of her that had always wanted to help others, to make the world a better place. But something didn't feel right. A soft rustling outside her door broke her reverie. She stood and crossed the room, opening the door just a crack. There, standing in the hallway, was Dorje, his face pale and drawn. Dorje, Eleanor whispered, what's wrong? He glanced around nervously before stepping inside, closing the door behind him. I've been having dreams, he said, his voice barely above a whisper. Strange, vivid dreams, ever since we arrived here. Eleanor's heart raced. What kind of dreams? Dorje sat on the edge of the bed, wringing his hands. I see a man, a man with a scarred face. He's sick, coughing up blood. But he's not just sick. There's something dark about him, something evil. Eleanor's breath caught in her throat. Rajan Singh. Dorje nodded. I think he's here, and I think the book is trying to warn me. Eleanor sat beside him, her mind racing. What does the book want from us, Dorje? Why did we come here? 
Dorje shook his head, his eyes wide with fear. I don't know. But I'm scared, Eleanor. I'm scared that we're not meant to find the Shiverham, that it's meant to find us. The night wore on, and the monastery was plunged into a deep silence. But inside Charlie's chamber, the air was thick with tension. I don't trust Dorje, Julian said suddenly, his voice cutting through the quiet. Charlie looked up, startled. What are you talking about? He's been with us from the beginning. Julian's eyes narrowed. That's exactly it. He's always been there, always helping, always guiding us. But think about it. How did he know to bring us here? How does he know so much about the Shivoham? Charlie frowned. You think he's working with Singh? Julian nodded slowly. It makes sense, doesn't it? Dorje leads us here, makes sure we're close to the book, and then Singh swoops in to take it. It's the perfect setup. Charlie shook his head, refusing to believe it. No, Dorje's not like that. He's. he's one of us. Is he? Julian's voice was sharp. Or has he been playing us this whole time? Before Charlie could respond, there was a loud crash from the hallway. Both men shot to their feet, rushing to the door. The hallway was in chaos. Monks were running in all directions, shouting in Tibetan, their faces filled with fear. In the middle of the corridor, a body lay crumpled on the floor. Charlie's heart stopped when he recognized the figure. Eleanor! He dropped to his knees beside her, his hands shaking as he checked her pulse. She was unconscious, but alive. Blood trickled from a gash on her forehead, and her breathing was shallow. What the hell happened? Julian demanded, grabbing a passing monk by the arm. The monk, his face pale with fear, stammered in broken English. The sick man, the one in seclusion, he attacked her. Charlie's blood ran cold. Sing. We need to get her out of here, Julian said, his voice tense. Now. But before they could move, the lights flickered, and the air grew thick with a strange energy. A deep, guttural sound echoed through the halls, sending chills down Charlie's spine. The Shiverham was awake. The group reconvened in a hidden chamber deep within the monastery. The monks, sensing the danger that had been unleashed, had taken them to a place of refuge, a sacred space where even the darkest of forces could not penetrate. Eleanor had regained consciousness but was weak, her face pale and drawn. She sat huddled in a corner, her eyes wide with fear, as the group tried to make sense of what had happened. We need to leave, Julian said, pacing the room. This place is cursed. The Shiverham is dangerous. We were wrong to come here. No, Eleanor said weakly, her voice trembling. We can't leave. Not yet. Charlie knelt beside her. Eleanor, you're hurt. We need to get you to safety. Eleanor shook her head, her eyes filling with tears. It's too late. The book. It's already chosen us. What do you mean? Charlie asked, his heart pounding. Eleanor took a deep breath, her voice barely a whisper. When Singh attacked me, I saw something. I saw the future. Our future. The Shivoham is more than just a book. It's alive, Charlie, and it's already begun weaving our fates together. Charlie felt a cold chill creep down his spine. What are you saying? I'm saying, Eleanor said, her voice breaking, that we were never meant to find the Shivaham. We were meant to become part of it. At that moment, the door to the chamber creaked open, and a figure stepped inside. It was the abbot, his face solemn and his eyes filled with sorrow. I warned you, he said softly, his voice filled with regret. The Shivoham is not to be trifled with. It does not give knowledge. It takes. Charlie stood, his fists clenched. What are you talking about? The abbot's eyes darkened. The Shivoham is a book of death. Its true name, 
is the book of the second death, and it feeds on the souls of those who seek it. You are not the first to come here searching for its power, and you will not be the last. The room fell into a stunned silence. We need to destroy it, Julian said, his voice hard. The abbot shook his head. It cannot be destroyed. It is eternal. Then what do we do? Eleanor whispered, her voice trembling. The abbot stepped forward, his eyes filled with sorrow. There is only one way to escape the Shiverham's grasp. Charlie's heart pounded in his chest. How? The abbot's voice was barely a whisper as he answered. You must choose the path. One of you must take the book's knowledge, and the rest must sacrifice themselves. A heavy silence fell over the room as the weight of the abbot's words sank in. We can't, Eleanor whispered, tears streaming down her face. There has to be another way. There is no other way, the abbot said softly. The Shivoham demands a price, and it always collects. As the group stood in stunned silence, the walls of the chamber seemed to close in around them, the weight of their fate pressing down on their shoulders.